it's been an exciting week for CNN. Russian collusion is still a lie. They spent two years telling the country, but they finally got someone to leak information on Donald Trump's taxes from 30 years ago. That information showed that Trump lost money. People in the network are excited about this. This is CNN Tonight. I'm Don Lemon. Are you listening? The president of the United States is a fraud and a con man. You, you were saying he's a sociopath. Without any question. A con? All of it? All of it was a con. You know, this person is a walking fraud. He calls people losers and he, he has such disdain and, and yet he was literally the biggest loser in the country. So if you remember the 90s, you might recall that Trump's business problems were a big news story. They were real. Trump wrote a book about them. But don't tell Don Lamon. He was shocked. You know what they say about gambling, casino gambling, right? The house always wins? Well, <laughs> not always. Not if it's a Trump casino. <laughs> Come on. Who loses money at a casino except for the person gambling, not the owner? <laughs> because I'm good enough, smart enough, and doggone people love me. What are the odds that Don Lamont says that in the mirror every morning? Hi. Joe Concha writes about media for The Hill, and he joins us tonight. Joe, great to see you tonight. So um, this didn't, so they basically discovered that Trump lost a ton of money in the 90s, which anyone who was alive then knew because it was a major story, but this was news because why? Why? Because it was presented as recycled news. I don't like to use the term fake news, Tucker, but in this case, you could have read Donald Trump's book from 2007, The Art of the Comeback. You could have read any of the New York tabloids, the New York Daily News, New York Post talked about the Trump slump for those years between 1985, 1994. You could have watched The Apprentice, season one, episode one, the very first segment, Donald Trump literally says on video that he lost billions of dollars, he was billions in debt, and he was able to come back. So to keep all of that out of reporting, if we want to call this even reporting, that is the bias of omission. We've talked about that before, and that is the worst kind of bias, because if you were, say, younger or you didn't follow Donald Trump or you live out of the bubble and you're taking care of your kids every day and you're working hard and you come home and you hear this story about Trump losing billions back at that time and you don't get the other side of the story, which is he was very transparent about it on TV, on books, you're being sold a, a bill of goods here that this is new revelation when it was anything but new, Tucker. Yeah, I mean, this, this, this was his whole story, right? I mean, this was, I mean, he bragged about it endlessly. Uh, you know, once was lost, now I'm found. This was his redemption story. Did you hear anybody covering this pause for a moment to say, a little weird that we're looking at private financial information that's supposed to be Proprietary. I mean, no one is supposed to have this information. Did anyone say that? Kind of a violation of privacy, no? No. Tucker, it, no one does because it's a means to an end, right? I remember I was on your show and we talked about the Access Hollywood tape and everybody yeah. concentrated, and rightly so, the contents of it. But then there was another part of that story, which is how exactly did that tape get exactly. out of NBC and into the hands of the Washington Post two days before a presidential debate, a major one, three weeks before an election? No one bothered to look into that and no one's going to bother to look into the fact that this was leaked by somebody, confidential information, and it got into the hands of the New York Times and obviously was spread everywhere. And, and by the way, and I, I get that Don Lemon, he's on at night and there are a lot of opinions at night, but he's still billed as an anchor. And for him to talk that way and act that way, and I've been on Don's show and he's a great guy in person, but I can never picture Brett Baer or Chris Wallace or Jeff Glore or David Muir ever acting like that, and they're anchors also. So right. you wonder why CNN struggles? And you want to hear about struggles, Tucker. So in cable news, they rank, obviously, all the shows by ratings. And you got to get down to number 36 out of Fox and MSNBC and CNN, number 36 to find the highest rated CNN show. In other words, the other 35 are the other two networks. So they have to understand they're alienating their viewers by acting like children on the air, but they're not doing it. I don't understand why when the results are so horrible from a business perspective. Because it's a political mission. I think that's, I think that's it. Joe Concha, great to see you tonight. Thank you for that. Happy Mother's Day. Happy weekend. Happy weekend.